Hello, everyone. This is Jane Rachel, and I am back with two people named Ellie, uh, both from Lebanon, who are great friends, but interestingly enough, both had a bad reaction to Cipro. Was it Cipro for both of, both of you? Because mine was Levoquin. Yeah. It was, okay. Yeah. So they're all on this line of antibiotics called the fluoroquinolones that have a lot of side effects. So uh, we heard the story from first Ellie. Now, second Ellie, tell me a little bit about, about your story. So basically when he was fluxed in, sorry, September, 2020, and COVID was just started fresh, lockdowns, restrictions, all these stuff were happening. So around February, I think, or March, I don't remember, I was like, where is Ellie? I, it's been a while, I haven't seen him. So I call him and I'm telling him, where are you, bro? Like, let me see you. He's like, I'm very sick, um, but if you wanna come over, you can come over, but don't be, you know, frightened. I was like, okay. And I wasn't fluxed back then. So I went over to his house and I remember being in shock, to be honest. I was shocked. I did not recognize my friend whom I've known for 10 years. He was at one point, like I wanted to say it, but I didn't want to say it. I thought he had cancer. Like, I don't know what else, what type of disease would make someone look like bones basically and skin he had no fat on his there's no fat underneath the skin nothing i was shocked to be honest and i asked him what is happening he's like i don't know what's happening i think i have a disease of some type i'm still trying to figure it out and he explained to me basically what he said and but he didn't tell me about like uh, what he took he was just explaining the story so i all, all this time i thought that okay my friend has a very severe disease and then you know life went on at around june june the 19th 18th i had this weird burning sensation when i had to pee when i had to urinate so i call my doctor and i tell him um okay so at first i didn't call him that was like I'm going to wait three days. If it doesn't go away, let me call my doctor. So I waited three days and didn't go away. I called my doctor. My doctor was in Canada because he left Lebanon. And I asked around for another doctor and they gave me this G general practitioner, this doctor. I've never seen before. I don't know who he is. I know that he's a family friend. That's all. So I went to him. He did some blood work. Uh, he did the urology test. Um, and during this time, he just said, you might have an infection. How? I don't know. Does he have x-ray vision in his eyes? I don't know. So he's like, let me give you azosmicillin. And I was like, okay. Um, he said, go take four pills and take them at the same time. So that's a 1,000 milligrams. Wait, Each one what, was two what was the name of that medication again? Azosmicillin. Is that, a, is that an antibiotic? Or... It's an antibiotic. It's an antibiotic. Okay. So he said, take 1000 milligrams and I took it. I remember feeling very tired and, you know, the usual antibiotic uh, reactions. And then uh, I woke up the next day, um, sensation is still there. I called him, he said, it was on a Saturday. He said, come Monday, let's see what's up. I go on Monday, he checks me again. He has the blood work in his hands and he reads it and he says, okay, uh, give me some time, uh, go back, because it was, again, lockdown this, this type of time. He's like, go back home and I'll call you. And I took the, I took the tests and I went back home and I remember being on the, in the road. Um, I was driving the car, my mom was next to me and he calls us and he's like, Ellie, go get Estesina. Estesina is the generic brand name in Lebanon for Cipro. It's a Spanish company. Uh, it's called Estesina 500, a Cipro 500. So I remember going to a couple of pharmacies and I didn't find Cipro. I wish I did not find it, to be honest. But unfortunately, I found it. I went home. He said, take one pill every morning for six days. I was like, okay. Monday, I take the pill. I didn't feel anything, to be honest. Second day, I took the pill. Perfectly fine. Third day, I took the pill in the morning around 10. And I remember like in the afternoon, I started to feel my lower back to be basically on fire. Uh, I was like, okay, this is weird. And I thought 
I, to be honest, I really thought like the couch was maybe sunlight was hitting on the couch or something. So I didn't think much of it. I just went to sleep. And I remember in Google, I, I Googled Cipro. I Googled Cipro the second day because I was just curious, like, what is this antibiotic? But it did not show any horror stories. It just showed basic side effects. When you Google ciprofloxacin, it just shows uh, nausea, uh, vomiting, irritability. Um, I mean, the worst one was diarrhea. That's what That was the worst side effect on it. I was like, okay, whatever. So on the third day, I remember sleeping as usual at 9 p.m. And I remember waking up at 2 a.m. Just tendon pain all over my arms, my legs, my ankles. Everything was in pain. And I remember feeling these weird, like something is crawling on my skin. I just wanted to rip my skin apart. I felt that too. And I was having a panic attack at the same time. I was sweating, cold sweats. I just didn't know what was happening. And I was like, just shouting, just shouting. And I remember, I remember my, uh, my sister came in and she was like, what's happening? Uh, I said, I just couldn't answer her. I just don't know. I was just so focused on what was happening. I didn't know. And I remember just passing out just because of the stress. And then I woke up at 8 a.m. And I remember like June 21st, 8 a.m. That was the last normal me day ever. And then I woke up. I feel like I aged 100 years. Mind you, a week before Cipro, even with the burning sensation, uh, I was playing basketball. We played basketball. I was playing basketball. I was going to the gym three times a week. I was fixing my diet because of lockdowns and we were just eating, eating the whole time. So I wanted to fix my body during the summer. And we were like, we, we were very social people. We used to go out to parties. We used to love life. We used to, we were, we were basically... <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, the, the the life of the group we have a big group and we were the life of the group the people who used to always laugh the people who used to always make jokes the people who you used to just have a good time with we were these two people and you will be again you're on your way there but so i remember being in horrendous pain everywhere and i called the doctor and i tell him doctor like why is my t why are my tendons in pain I mean, I had burning sensation. Now my tendons are in pain. What did you give me? I, I just directly knew it was the medication. I didn't know Cipro or like Cipro does this. I just knew like whatever it was called, it was this medication that did this. And he's like, what? Stop it immediately. Uh, it will be fine. Nothing. Three, four days, one week tops. You're going to be perfect again. That's what they told me. And you, only, like, had this, you only had how many pills? This three pills? Three, or three pills. And the following like week, I waited one week, nothing. I could walk. I did not have like problems with some fluxies who say they can't, they're on wheelchairs or they need crutches or I didn't need, I was walking fine, but I was in pain. So my symptoms were tendon pain, burning sensations. I had insomnia and the insomnia started a week later like around two weeks later, a week or two weeks, I don't really remember. Um, I had this weird head pressure, not a headache, not a migraine, but like someone was just pressing like a brain squeeze. And for some weird reason, I mean, I researched a lot. Uh, I had a sore throat. I don't know why. I didn't find even like that as a side effect, but I had an inflamed, inflamed throat. He also had it as well. Our throats were just like tight. Um, I had, uh, I, I wasn't hit in the gut. I did not have any gut issues. Um, yeah, those were my symptoms. So two weeks later, insomnia kicked in. I was sleeping one hour a night. I would wake up in pains. Um, I just went crazy, you know? Insomnia is the worst. That makes everything, you know, the makes, worst. is the worst. And combine that with head pressure 24-7. I couldn't function. I, I I was suicidal, to be honest. I was suicidal. I was like, I don't want to live too. like this. Me too. I, you know, I, I remember begging I, a, a doctor 
to, um, I was, hospital, I was to hospitalize people, me. I, wish, I was telling people I would break my foot with my own arms right now if I can go back in time and not take Cipro. It yeah. was that bad. It was that bad. Um, um, I started Googling and I remember taking out the medication and I opened the leaflet and that's when I saw like, oh my God, what the fuck are these side effects? How the hell is this? How, how is this be, be, even being called a medication? I mean, if the doctor even hinted to me that, Ellie, you might rupture the tendon, I would have... I wouldn't even have taken the medication. I was like, I don't want that. I'd rather have burning sensation in, in while urinating all my life as well. I don't have a problem. So I went to other doctors. I went to three doctors. The first doctor was like, he was just, no, this isn't Cipro. It's not Cipro. It's you. It's stress. It's anxiety. I'm like, <clears throat> what the fuck, man? How the hell is that stress? They say, the when they don't know what it is, they say it's how anxiety. The hell is that stress, man? Yeah. How how I was playing basketball and I'm going to the gym a week prior. You know, I forgot about that doctor. I went to another urologist and he tested me. He's like, um, you didn't need an antibiotic. I was like, I don't understand. And he's like, you just had a high pH in your urine. And it's literally in your blood work, the, the, whom the first doctor asked for. I mean, he, does he not know how to read his blood work? I was like, I'm not the doctor. I, I go to you guys, you know, to, to, fix my, to fix my problems. And then I went to a third doctor just to be sure that the urologist was correct. And the third doctor was looking at the paperwork and he's like, why did he give you Cipro? I mean, he said, I give Cipro but I give Cipro if you're crawling to my office after trying 10 antibiotics and they don't work. That's when I give you Cipro. But like for a, he said, you didn't even need this. You just needed to stop drinking sodas and lay off acidic uh, foods because your pH was high. Yeah, you know? I, didn't need, I didn't need it either. It seems like half the doctors know it's a bad medication and half don't. So how, exactly. long, did, how long did you have the symptoms for? It's been six months exactly. I can say I'm 90% better. Um, That's great. I, so the symptoms were insomnia was the worst. It went away on its own around a month out. Uh, I went, uh, let me remind you, first month I went to a naturopath. So he injected me with uh, vitamin C. Uh, I did IVs of lipids, which are omega, omega-3, omega-6. I also did B-complex. And he was the only doctor, he was one of the only doctors who was being positive to me. He's like, it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Everything will heal as long as the tendon has not ruptured. You just need to lay off sports and let yourself heal and try to be positive. He was always like being positive with me. Um and then I went, finally, I found a very good doctor, the one who said, like, I don't give Cipro unless it's like uh, the final option. He calls it the nuclear option, you know. <clears throat> so um, I went to him. He prescribed me supplements. He said, you do not touch any type of medication unless I tell you. Uh, and of course, I researched online. At first, I joined that Facebook, horrible Facebook group, to be honest with like 10,000, 15,000 followers. At first I was like, okay, this is a nice place. Okay, there's 15,000 people like me. Let me get some info. So I posted, hey, I took three pills. Am I going to get better? And all the comments were like, you're going to stay like this forever. It's been seven years and my neuropathy hasn't healed. I was like, what the? I just left the group the same day. To be honest, I found a very good group. It's on the subreddit. They're called Floxies. And that group is just filled with like intellects and logical people and their um their rules are very nice they do not allow people to like scare other people um, it's just 1600 members and that group really was a lifesaver to me because everyone was friendly even the people who were like six six years out were like it's gonna be fine you're gonna be fine you're young don't worry so i started magnesium glycinate I took vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, omega-3. I took um, 
What was it? Uh, I take a turmeric, turmeric curcumin. I take as well uh, CoQ10. It's been like this for the past six months. Every day in the morning, I take on oh, the ALA 600. I take these every day for the past six months. I don't know if they help or not, to be honest, but I know one thing, the magnesium glycinate helped with my anxiety. That's great. And are you guys back like playing sports and going out no, again or no, not, not yet. yet. I'm not still yet. in the, like, just being careful. You know? Yeah. But um, I mean, your story um, shows you do get better. And I think like, again, those websites are a double-edged sword because on one hand, you know, there are people who validate you because, you know, your family and friends are like, what are you making this up? Right. So there's all these people who feel the same thing, but they do scare you. And, yeah. um, you know, I took, I took, I think more time than most. I'm, I'm older than both of you and I had prior autoimmune disease. So I think I'm the long path, but most of the people I talked to got better somewhere between six months and 18 months. Right. So these, these, these sites, with people saying they never got better is are terrifying and that's why we want to show stories of people yeah, getting I mean, at better. first uh, people were saying coffee is gonna uh coffee is bad for you um sugar is bad for you um i can't eat gluten anymore and all that stuff i was like okay i out of fear i stopped doing those and then one day i was like i think it was a two-month thought i was like i miss coffee so i went to starbucks and i bought a coffee and i drank it i'm like okay nothing's happening why am i not drinking coffee so i drink coffee every day now yeah i also uh, i smoke cigarettes as well they do help i'm not saying you should smoke cigarettes i'm just saying it helps me just with the stress um i took an sri as well uh i took an ssri for one month and this doctor told me if you feel that you do not need this SSRI, you do not, don't take it. But if you think you're going to be better on it, try it. So I tried it for one month. It did help. But then I was just like, okay, let me, I, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm mentally better. I also went to a therapist as well. Right. Uh, she tried CBT, which helped a lot. Yep. Cognitive, so, just so everyone knows that's cognitive behavioral therapy, where you kind of work on the thoughts that are going on in your head. And actually, like I had underlying issues, pre-flux that I was tackling as well, but like fluxing just blew everything out of proportion, yeah. you know, exactly. because you take a person or two people who are hyperactive, love life, love going out on Saturdays. I mean, we used to go, like we would be at home. I couldn't sit at home because I could, used to get bored between four, four, four walls. I would call him and tell him, hey, I'm going to come pick you up. Uh, it would be a Monday night, just after the weekend. Let's go for a cruise. Let's go have some dinner. Let's go watch a movie, whatever. And yeah. then you come and say, you can't do this anymore. You can't do this anymore. You can't drink alcohol anymore. You can't drink uh, coffee anymore. You're yeah. going to go crazy. You're going to you know? go crazy. And like I took um, some Balta, which is similar to Celexa and all the Floxy sites were like, stay away from it. But honestly, it helps. Like I don't, I wouldn't have slept. I wouldn't have, you know, it helped with the pain and the anxiety and I'm not on it anymore. Right. So I just think, you know, this idea that you have to avoid all medicine is not true. This is a, you know, this is a particularly bad line of antibiotics. Doesn't mean you have to avoid everything. Um, yeah. yeah. So what do you see the, in the future? I, I would predict a total recovery for both of you, right? You're on your way. Um, yeah, I still have. Uh, so at, uh, it's been six months. My last two symptoms uh, around two weeks ago were the head pressure and the sore throat. And it turned out they were allergies uh, all this time. So I was taking and my doctor found out he's like, Ellie, you know, like some people have underlying issues. And for example, in your case, you had seasonal allergies, which showed only some red skin. I mean, red skin is not going to bother you, but it's other symptoms are head pressure and sore throat. So what Cipro did was it made it not underlying anymore. So I had head pressure and sore throat, which were bothersome. So I took antihistamines and they went away. Yeah. Um, and that just goes back to, again, we don't all have the same thing. Like I had autoimmune disease before this and this, you know, made more autoimmune disease. Just curious in the U.S., more. Oh, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. No, I just have one more thing to say. This is my last symptom, which popped up about a week ago. It's a new symptom. Is this weird um, cold feet? I don't know if you had it. Just like your feet are cold all the time, under a blanket, with socks, with shoes, whatever. They're cold. And I usually get these weird burning sensations in my left foot, which is my good foot. 
but it's not bothersome. It's just annoying, you know, but it's not, it's on a scale of one to 10, it's like a five, you know. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but it sounds like it could be a mild neuropathy or something like that. It is, but it's peripheral it's a, neuropathy. I'm okay. taking gabapentin for it. For it, yeah. And I mean, it's not great, but compared to all the other stuff, it's better. I'm curious, like, <laughs> in the... In the U.S., we have something called the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, where, you know, they're not always great, uh, but they now have something called black box warnings, which basically are warnings saying, you know, all the things that these drugs do. What, I mean, is that, do you have something similar in Lebanon? Like, is there, what, in Beirut, what? No, nothing. No? We have none of this shit. Um, my doctor, who, uh, the one who hates, he hates giving out antibiotics in general. He's like, Eli, last year I had a conference where I just, before COVID, he was telling other doctors to stop prescribing antibiotics for anything. In Lebanon, I'm talking about my, our childhood, and most of these, most of the, most of the parents here, without a doctor, you would go to your parent and say, I have a, like a sore throat. He's like, go take augmentine. You know, just go to the pharmacy. And the pharmacy doesn't do anything. If you go buy 10 augmentines, they're going to be like, okay, whatever, I'm selling, I'm making money. Um, so he tried to do a conference and no one listened. He said, don't give out antibiotics. Don't give out specially FQs to just mild infections. I didn't have an infection even. He, he took antibiotics and she told him, take these as a precautionary measure. But he's negative. Why are you giving out precautionary antibiotics, especially like flagyl, which is nasty by itself, including uh, the nuclear option, which is Cipro. They're, I don't know. I don't know these doctors. I don't you know, understand them. That, you know, so in the US, the FDA is now saying like, only give out this like antibiotic if nothing else works. So it should be your last resort. But I really like, think, you know, they, they don't know it. And I do, honestly don't blame the doctors because the drug companies, they, t they t lie to them and tell them it's fine. So what advice, know, oh, go ahead. Go ahead what, advice, what advice would we give to anyone to, watching? Yeah, to anyone yeah. watching. Okay, first of all, always Google any type of medication. I mean, all medications have side effects, um, but I mean, I know someone who took ibuprofen and has kidney failure, you know. Um, always Google, if you really need this medication, are you really in need of medication? Like prostatis, prostatis or prostatis? I don't know what the prostatis, I think most of them are even non-bacterial and the, just, they just throw uh, antibiotics at you. I mean, when I called my doctor, he reassured me, like one week, you'll be fine. I've been giving this uh, antibiotic for 30 years. And I, I told him like, this, this excuse of 30 years, this is like telling me I've been crossing the highway for 30 years and no car hit me. That's stupid, you know? That's a very stupid uh, excuse they give, they give people. It ruined our lives. He lost, he didn't lose. I mean, he lost a year and three months of his life and it was a painful one year and three months. I lost six months and okay, we're better, but this is all unnecessary. This yeah. is all unnecessary. I mean, that's a hundred percent. I now will never take a new medication without Googling it first. So uh, that is, you know, certainly yes. one. And then these fluoroquinolones do not take unless you absolutely have yes. to. Yes, and even if your doctor reassures you just as he did me, just as she did to him, it's rare, nothing will happen. I've been giving this for like 30, 20, 50 years, 100 years, nothing happened. Don't, just go to Google, uh, Google the side effects. It's just, it's better safe than sorry, to be honest. Yeah, and to be honest, when they say they haven't seen it in that many years, sometimes you don't know because well, like three months later, you can rupture your Achilles, right? And the doctor does not put those together. So, and then, it, and then I do even a worse thing. And then they give steroids, you know, they inject yeah. steroids into the tendon, which is contradicted by the FDA itself. Like, yep. are these doctors delusional or something? I don't know, you know? So last thing to end on, unless the, I forgot anything. So that was advice for people not to take the medication. But if someone's dealing with it now, what do you have, both, either of you, what do you have to say to someone who's got it, who's dealing with it right now? I mean, when, when you're first in it, it might look like it's the end of the world. But you just, as Eli said, you need to give it time. I mean, if I go back to myself one month, I would like just slap him. 
and tell him, don't be suicidal. <clears throat> don't think it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Stop Googling. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Like you don't know anything about anyone. You just know your body. You know it very well. You can't compare to someone who has, let's say, underlying, for example, I can compare myself to you. You can compare yourself to me or to him. I can't compare myself to him either. His gut was messed up. My gut wasn't messed up. I got burning sensations more than him. We both got insomnia. It's just so random, you know? But ultimately, I think almost everybody does get better in time. And yes. so yes, I've that's spoken it. To, I've spoken to many flux. I have become friends with many fluxes. And some of them, I talk to them on the daily, on the WhatsApp and on Reddit. Um, I've spoken to maybe like three Fluxies who have recovered fully, 100%. Yep. And I've read many posts of people who have recovered 100%. And always remember that people who recover are not going to go back to these groups and post their recovery because they're just going to move on with their life, you know? So maybe you will find someone who is nice enough to do it, but you're just going to end up seeing the horror stories because those are the people stuck there. You know That is so true because what happens is when you start to get better, you move on from your life and you don't go back to those sites. So it's the people who write. Right. And, you know, and you, you, know, you don't want to go back and reread all these yep. problems. You know? And, you know, and some people have other conditions. Like, for example, I had other autoimmune conditions, so it's taken me a lot longer. So, but that doesn't mean that's going to be you. Anything I forgot to ask or anything else you want to add? Because I think this has been really helpful and inspirational uh, and getting the word uh, out. Like the advice I can tell you is uh, like, like for everybody that ha has or took, let's say, uh, Cipro, it's you don't know how you feel. It's just you don't know how you feel. You might know how you feel, but you don't know how you feel. It's just something out of your control. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to only say, like, listen to your body. But yet again, your body might trick you into something you don't know. So this is the problem, is that we don't know how we feel or how, what we felt or what we were feeling at that time. Yeah. I mean, I don't even remember the insomnia period because my brain was, as soon as I gained my sleep back, my brain just, like, deleted all of those memories. Which um, might be a good thing because they were pretty bad memories, I'm sure. It was hard. It was, hard. I, mean, yeah. I got COVID and I almost died. I mean, COVID wasn't this bad, as bad. And I almost, like, almost, uh, you know, died on COVID. Yeah. But this yeah. is torment. This is Cipro is torment. Like, I never, they teach us in schools, like, drugs, uh, you know, like, recreationals are bad like cipro those are toys compared to cipro you know yeah i mean i i hate i never, I hate I never imagined in my right mind that a medication would do this to be honest like it never like surpassed my just like my logic that a fucking five dollar medication yeah destroy someone in this manner yeah i mean I would... tendon rupture tendon rupture okay like your tendon is fucked up okay, whatever, I'll take a year to heal. People tear their tendons and it takes a year to heal. But like insomnia, head pressure, gut being destroyed, you can't drink alcohol, you can't do this, you can't do, what the hell, man, you know? I mean, I hate comparing one thing to, to another, but I will say this, before I took the fluoroquinolone, I did have breast cancer and it was stage one and everybody was sending me flowers and being so nice to me. And, you know, I'm not saying this about all cancer, but stage one, it was a piece of cake. I knew what doctor to go to. I knew I had a good prognosis. I knew exactly what to do. This hit, nobody believed me. I could barely walk. I could barely lift yeah. up my arms. And it was a thousand times scarier. And no one was yeah. sending me any flowers, right? Because, yeah, you, no, exactly. so, no, no, yeah. you know, they don't know what the hell's wrong with you, right? You say you have cancer and people are like, oh my God. And they're, they're really nice and helpful. But at least, you know, obviously I'm not making light of cancer, but it was stage one. And I would take that over this any day so um but i'm glad you're better to be honest how, uh, how, uh, how much in percentage are you back i'm only about 75 to 80 percent better but i had underlying autoimmune diseases so when it first happened i could barely walk across my apartment and it's new york city what does it actually mean to have like uh, what are the symptoms of autoimmune yeah. disease I'm, I'm i mean curious. it's basically your body attacking its own um 
it's your body attacking itself. So I already had an autoimmune disease that was making my muscles kind of weak, but it was completely in remission. And then this either took that out of remission and caused new autoimmune diseases. So it's, for me, it's really weakness and fatigue. Um, So when it first happened, I could barely walk across my apartment. In New York City, apartments are small. And I couldn't like even lift up my arms to write an email. And like, I type all day for work. Um, I don't know how I got through that first year at work. I was using a dictaphone. Normally I had to take the subway and I was taking like, you know, cabs. I I couldn't walk. So now I can, I can be on my feet for about two hours. I can type for two hours, but I say 80% because I used to be able to type for 10 hours. I used to be on my feet for 10, you know, um, and I find that I need a nap after four or five hours, um, which I never did before. I used to be able to work a 10 hour day and then go out to dinner after. So it's still, you know, it's still interfering with my life, but it's a thousand Mm -hmm. times better when I couldn't, I literally couldn't even hold up a book. Like, you know, and I love to read and my arms were not strong enough to like either like swipe on the the reader or hold the book up. So I am a thousand times better, but it still has affected my entire life. You know, it really has. But but um, the goal now is to get the word out and to help other people. And I'm so grateful for your story. I'm going to I'm going to show it. I'm going to put it online, but I'm also going to show it to some Yes, specific people who have going it right now, because you guys are both proof that you can and will get better in in, in a relatively short period of time. And maybe yeah, we I can mean, also... At first, people usually like, because we are just used to like days, you know, with medication yeah. and getting better. And when someone comes and tells you like, you need a year to get better, you're like, what? <clears throat> you, know? Yes. you know, the problem is like, uh, we had an issue with a medication breath but the problem is like we didn't know it was the medication yet when we knew it was the medication like if it was out there and everybody like going uh let's say on track and uh, the hospitals or basically the doctors know that this medication can do this if i had an issue or he had an issue we went to the hospital and we had a reaction they knew to tell us that we have an issue with this medication this is what you have to do. This is what you have to do to recover. At least we wouldn't go through this trauma not knowing where the fuck we are, you know? It's like we're on La La Land and their doctors are somewhere else. It just doesn't make sense. Just actually at least explain to your patient that you have an issue with your this medication. I want to, okay, just tell me I take this medication and I'm going to feel this and that. I can deal with it if you tell me at first or at least let me know. Not just like ruin my life and then not knowing what to do. Honestly, they don't know. So for example, my brother is a doctor, right? He prescribed it for years. And then what's funny is he was giving it to his wife. And every time she took it, she was like, you know, my ankle's hurting me. And he's like, Nanabata can't do that to an ankle. And then sure enough, he prescribed it to himself and he was playing tennis and he ruptured his Achilles and he never prescribed it again. But like, they don't know because they're not taught that, right? Like, you know, and they don't use, say that again. Did he recover? Yeah. yeah, he has. And he's never prescribed it again. And he does remind me that he told me not to take it years ago, but I forgot. So I, you know, I kind of mad at myself because he <laughs> did tell me, but I mean, it was years before and I didn't remember. So, um, no, I mean, like what I want to say, like Cipro has its place in medicine. I mean, it has saved people's lives. I'm not going to, uh, this is a fact, but you cannot give it to a person who just has a, a simple uh, UTI, you know, or just a, a stomach bug or, or just, and, and, and worst of all is like half of these people don't even have an infection to begin with. They just like directly prescribe it because it's the strongest antibiotic. No, man, you know? And exactly the FDA in the US is now saying you don't prescribe it unless nothing else will work. But you know what, what I think the FDA should do? I think the FDA should put, just as they put horrible pictures of, of gory images on cigarette boxes, on Cipro, they should put a fucking, a fucking like a ruptured tendon as a picture because not most people read the FDA. And um, some of these are X, uh, like uh, bottles that they fill. I know one Fluxy who lives in the US, she told me like there's no, they didn't have any side effects. There was no FDA warning. So it's not fully implemented yet in the U.S. as well. No, and the doctors don't know about it. And like they don't, it's, if you Google it, you find it, but they don't, they don't doctor by Google, right? They look in their um, whatever physician's desk reference and I don't believe it's exactly. there. 
So we're getting the word out. So if you're watching, if you can avoid taking these line of antibiotics, please do. And if you have taken it, give yourself the time, you will get better. And thank yeah. you both so much. No, thank you.